Now, we've all heard a lot about the dangers and the threats of artificial intelligence, but Elon Musk just put it into context, I think a context that everyone can understand. If you define AGI as smarter than the smartest human, I think it's probably end of next year, like, like within two years. Is it smarter than all humans working together uh, who, who are also using computers to augment their output? And that, that, I think, is probably five years away. That's unsettling. And this comes on the heels of a new Wall Street Journal report where Japan's top telecom company and the largest, a country's largest newspaper joined together to warn what will happen if artificial intelligence is left unchecked. In the worst case scenario, democracy, democracy and social order could collapse, resulting in wars. That's all. Joining me now is John uh, Schweppe, policy director at the American Principles Project, and Connor Leahy, CEO of Conjecture. Connor, a lot of people hear this. They don't really get what it is, except maybe they'll write some essays for you. But what is all the danger of AEI that uh, people are talking about here? I think one of the first and most important things to understand is that AI is very different from traditional software. So when we're talking about software, you know, like you might use it on your computer, it is written with code. You have programmers who write code, instructions that tell the computer what to do. You have like a, you know, like text, you can read it, you can understand kind of like what you're telling the computer to do. This is not how AI works. AI is more like organic. You have these huge piles of data on these massive supercomputers, and you kind of grow a program on your data. And the way this program looks is kind of like just a bunch of numbers. And these numbers don't make sense to us humans. It's kind of like you're looking in a Petri dish. But if you execute the numbers, if you run them on your computer, they can do fantastical things. I'm sure many of us have tried ChatGPT or the various video generation or picture generation software. But we don't actually know how they work. So if we think, if we Take this seriously, that we can use these things to make smarter and smarter systems that can do more and more things, that can understand more and more complex tasks and can perform those, those things. Well, currently, we just heard Elon Musk telling us that he thinks human-level intelligence could come in a couple of years. And I will ask the question, you know, if we build something that is smarter than all humans, better at deception, manipulation, mm. politics, science, business, and everything else, and we don't know how to control it, which we currently don't, what do you think is going to happen? Mm. John, what happens to humans at that point? Well, what, what do, I mean, as it is, you were talking about your hometown in Illinois, all the jobs moved overseas because, of course, you can make cheap stuff over in Asia. All those communities lost their hub of manufacturing. And now, now this. Well, I don't think our leaders are really wrestling with what could actually happen. And certainly, you know, folks like Elon, who, you know, love him for buying Twitter and making it a, a free speech place. But, you know, ultimately, these guys aren't really thinking about what could happen. You know, it's the Jurassic Park line where, you know, they're thinking about what they can do, but not necessarily what they should do. And, you know, the scary thing here is how, what kind of guardrails are we going to put into place? Are we going to, you know, put AI in charge of our nuclear arsenals, of our bio labs? We already saw with COVID-19 what happens with science run amok. And so that's the fear here. Mm. And, and, you know, Washington doesn't seem to be taking it very seriously. Well, also, Connor, you think about AI-generated news. I mean, we're in the opinion business on this show. We break a lot of news as well. But what happens when that gets written in order to control a population or stoke passions within a population and divisions within that population, and it moves at lightning speed? That's another thing beyond nuclear weapons, which is the end of, 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 of times as we know them. But before we would get there, a lot of other things would have to happen, correct? Of course, the kind of technology that already exists today is incredibly powerful for psychological and mimetic warfare. The systems that exist today are already used by, you know, both domestic and international actors to produce, uh, you know, artificial videos, voice cloning technology, et cetera. Currently, there is ex accessible to anyone watching this program online. You can buy from company software that allows you to take 15 second clip of anyone's voice and clone it, make them say anything you want perfectly realistic. This is already possible today for consumers. But what do you think is possible with even more advanced technology that's currently being developed? Using this, it is currently possible that you can meet someone online, you talk to them for a whole year, you get to know them, you send pictures back and forth, you know, and so on. And this person never existed. It was an AI all along. This technology already exists 
today and is being used already to form narratives to push wow. division and so on. So it's already starting and it's only going to get worse, especially once we have multiple such systems interacting with each other and, and competing fighting with each, each other. other. We're already seeing this. Yeah, exactly. competing with each other. John, what do we need to do? Congress needs to get involved. I mean, we're, everyone's like, oh, I'm, I'm a libertarian. We don't do anything. Well, this is one of those cases where we actually need smart regulations if there is such a thing. But something yeah. has to happen. Well, look, I think Democrats are already looking at this as how do we weaponize this in our favor? How do we censor yeah. conservatives, deplatform them? Don't want and, that. And I'm afraid that Republicans in Congress haven't figured it out yet. You know, they're still inviting folks from big tech funded think tanks to testify on the Hill about AI. And we really need them to start taking this seriously. You know, we need to, to hold AI cre uh, creators accountable and then ultimately mm. make sure they're not censoring folks and, and, and putting out, you know, DEI AI. AI. To Connor's point, when they use someone's image or voice, and people can send funny videos now, there has to be a stamp that can't be taken off of that voice, correct? Am I, am I onto something here, Connor? Well, you can't take it off of the actual original voice. They're looking into that technology. But you, there's always ways around that as well, because AI can figure out how to get around it. Um, John and Connor, we could do a whole hour on this, and I know we will in the future. Thank you.